Hi, this is Bruce with Treasures of Stone. Today I want to create a video that will explain the kind of glues that I typically use when working with uh, rough stone, especially if I want to do things like uh, repair broken stone or if I want to uh, glue some object to the stone. And then we'll also talk about uh, what the, you need to do to prepare the stone if you're going to be coated or, se or sealed. I created this little characteristics guide to kind of show you the kind of glues that seem to work best under different situations. As general information, most glues work best if you allow them to set up a little bit before you put some clamps on them or before you weight them. Not so much that it squeezes out the glue. You want to be sure that you follow the instructions from the glue manufacturers. For example, when using something like the uh, original Gorilla Glue, you want to use a little bit of water with it. You just want to dampen the surfaces. And if you use too much water, you'll know it because when you put your fingernail into it, you get kind of a spongy substance. Now, basically, the uh, E6000 glue that I use quite a bit of, that and the GO2 glue are basically interchangeable. The GO2 glue is a little runnier when you put it on and uh, that's about the only difference that I see. Um, they're kind of a hard silicon is what I call them. The other glue that I use quite a bit of is uh, super glue. It tends to dry kind of hard. It tends to be also be glassy and uh, quite a bit brittle. So the first example I want to uh, use is if we were going to repair a broken stone. Now if the appearance matters, I would suggest using the super glue gel to glue these two surfaces together. But remember, it's going to leave a, a glossy, wet looking trace, but you can easily sand that off. You can scrape it a bit and then sand it off and you'll have nothing but a nice finish on it. So in order to glue the two pieces together, I normally lay them on some kind of a cheap chopping mat is what I use. Now I got this thing at uh, Dollar Tree. You get a couple of them for a buck. And I use that because the super glue doesn't stick to it very well. You can lay it right onto that uh, mat, glue the stuff together, and when it dries, you can just peel that uh, flexible mat off of it. So if, if I'm gluing two things together and the, and the appearance doesn't matter, then I'll use the, the original Gorilla Glue and then just razor blade off any excess. The next example I want to talk about is uh, if you want to glue an object to the stone. First thing you want to do is some surface preparation. You want to be sure that the stone is nice and clean and dry. Uh, to do that, I usually use cat litter or baking soda or flour or anything. Just put it in and leave it for several days or a week or two to be sure you get all the oil removed from the cutting uh, process. And then you can brush it under running water, air dry it, and you're ready to put your glue on. At the very least, I would wash it with a dish soap like Dawn that's good at removing oil. You want to clean the other surface with alcohol to get anything off of it. I usually sand it lightly to make sure that it's a little bit rough. Uh, take some of that gloss off of there. And then you want to be sure that the surface contours match perfectly as you can get it. You know, you, can, you, know, you may be able to see this one kind of wobbles back and forth. I haven't straightened it out yet. So you want to be sure that you get that uh, nice and tight or on there. Then you select the proper kind of glue as we got here. You want to fit the things together and let the glue cure slightly as we talked about earlier and then you can clamp it or weight it. I prefer using the Gorilla Glue or the GO2 or the E6000 instead of the Super Glue for a project like that because the Super Glue gets so hard and it can pop loose. Now, warning about the Gorilla Glue, the Gorilla Glue will expand when you put uh, that moisture on it that we talked about. 
and the two objects can actually walk a little bit out of place. You know, you put it here, you, you know, you put your glue on it, you put it there, you walk off for an hour and come back and find out the thing moved half, half an inch while you were gone. So you want to put something around it, hold it in place, tape it in place, whatever, to keep it from shifting until the glue sets up. That'll just take a few minutes and then you can glue it or weight it into place. Third example, let's say we were going to take this uh, stone and we were going to put a coating or a sealer on it. Now I use this craft coat, polymer coating. I refer to it as epoxy because it's a two-part substance that you mix together very well and then put that on the stone to get a nice bright shiny finish on it. Uh, again, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, you will want to use those, uh, those steps I mentioned to remove any oil residue before you try putting the epoxy on it. For, you know, like if we, if we had sealed this, then there's going to be a crack right along here. So for these cracked areas or the pitted areas or the little, you know, uh, porous stone areas, if you applied the epoxy to that, it's going to show up uh, as little tiny cracks and little tiny pits in the surface of your nice fresh coating. And you'd have to put a second or a third coat of the epoxy to seal all this up. So to prevent this, I usually use the, uh, the thin super glue for the little cracks. Then let it dry. It may take two or three uh, coatings of that. Then you can scrape off the excess, sand it as I mentioned earlier. For things like little pits, if you can notice these little pits in here, or maybe even along the edges, I might use the, uh, the gel because it's a little bit thicker. And uh, you know, you, when you put the gel on, you can uh, wrap your finger in a little piece of plastic and just smear it out nice and thin. Makes it a little bit easier when it comes time to uh, sand it off and, uh, and, and get it ready for the final, final finish. I don't use the GO2 or the E6000 if I'm talking about a surface preparation like that because if you had to come back and sand it down nice and smooth that GO2 and E6000 will leave little pills on the surface and it'll show up when you put your epoxy on there you can't it's really hard to get rid of those little pills now if you had a a larger stone that was very porous or it had lots of pits and cracks Another little trick that I use is I'll use two parts of water and one part of white glue. Brush it over the entire surface, let it dry. Sometimes I'll use two or three coatings of that. That seals it up pretty nicely and then I'll apply that epoxy sealer. So when we follow the aforementioned tips and tricks, we could have a nicely completed stone. We've repaired the break. We filled all the cracks and pits, then we sealed the entire surface with a nice bright shiny coat of epoxy and we glued a nice high quality metal clip to the back of it and we've created a nice looking nightlight. So good luck with your stonework, thanks for your attention and please come visit us on Etsy, Facebook and Fine Art America.